um, cabinet received from the Honorable Vice President Casey D. Mohadi as chairman of the ad hoc interministerial task force on the COVID-19 an update on the steps that are being taken to contain the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. The cumulative uh, rapid screening and PCR tests conducted on the 3rd of August 2020, uh, 1, 137,808. The country has recorded a cumulative 4,075 confirmed COVID-19 cases compared to the previous reported uh, 2,000. 704, which is 51% increase. While the cumulative number of confirmed local cases has risen by 78% from the previous reported 1,675 to 2,982, most of the local cases are in Harare. <coughs> Harare has 1,299. Pulawayo comes second with 947. Midlands Province third with 245. Mashonaland West, Mashonaland East with 161. Manikaland 113. Recoveries have increased by 95% from 542 to 1,075, while deaths increased by 122% from 36 to 80. In light of the spike of COVID-19 cases, the number of PCR tests done per week has doubled with the average test per day standing at 1,130, as compared to 559 uh, the week ending 24 July 2020. 70% of the tests are being conducted by the private sector. As a precautionary measure to curb the transmission of, of COVID-19, uh, at food markets, which are characterized by crowding, poor sanitation, and lack of reticulated water, cabinet resolved as follows. A, that is the restructuring of the vegetable market base in line with COVID-19 uh, protocols be done in all vegetable markets. B, that markets operate a six-day cycle with mandatory closure for disinfection on the seventh day. C, that all vendors at stalls should uh, exercise extreme precaution like the use of sanitizers and co constant hand washing with soap and running water, and a D, that a targeted information education campaign be conducted to promote a, the new normal <coughs> among traders and customers at these markets. Government will also come up with measures to be enforced in all places where people converge in large numbers. Cabinet has directed that all hospitals should admit patients without pre-requirement for prior COVID-19 test results and proceed to do PCR tests on admission. To that end, the Minister of Health and Child Care has already directed 
all public and private health institutions to establish patient under investigation PUI zones to ensure that no patients are turned away. In terms of preparedness, the nation is informed that Wilkins and Bulawayo United Hospitals, uh, UBH, are now admitting mild to moderate cases. The recruitment of nursing staff is already underway. In the same vein, His Excellency the President has appealed to the striking nurses, uh, person, nursing personnel to return to work such that the loss of lives can be minimized. Following recent developments in South Africa, where the time of storage of bodies has been reduced, Cabinet resolved to grant the Zimbabwean mission in South Africa a special waiver during the COVID-19 pandemic period to clear the repatriation of undocumented Zimbabwean bodies for burial back home on the basis of uh, submitted affidavits from the chief or village head and relatives in Zimbabwe. Cabinet is appealing for responsible behavior and call on all social media users to desist from posting or peddling falsehoods on COVID-19 that may cause despondency and alarm in the nation. The public is reminded that the peddling of falsehoods in the, is a punishable offense in terms of COVID-19 regulations. Recommendations from the 2018 and 2019 annual reports of the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission. On this issue, Honorable Vice President K.C.D. Mohadi, as Chairman of the Cabinet Committee on National Peace and Reconciliation, presented recommendations from 2018 and 2019 annual reports of the National Peace and Reconciliation Commission, which were adopted by Cabinet. The Vice President uh, will present the recommendations to Parliament in due course as required by the Constitution. <clears throat> Highlights of the recommendations include the following. A, that legislation and code of conduct will be put in place to regulate uh, the operations and conduct of all political parties. B, that campaigning against one's country shall be uh, legislated at law and criminalized. C, that ex existing laws shall be strengthened to include elements that foster tolerance, equality and social cohesion among Zimbabweans as well as prohibit hate speech by public officials, media houses and citizens in public uh, spaces and social, print and electronic media platforms. D, that the public should be educated on the security service complaints handling and feedback mechanisms. E, that development of the witness, of the wit witness protection bill be expedited. And lastly, that historians will be resourced to document inclusive storylines that reframe and capture agreeable narratives 
about Zimbabwe's history. The third item was the Mosi Watunya Development Company. Cabinet considered and adopted a report on the operations of Mosi Watunya Development Company, which was presented by the Minister of Environment, Tourism and, uh, and Hospitality Industry. The company was formed in 2012 as an investment vehicle for government in the development of tourism facilities in Victoria Falls. It assisted in mobilizing resources for development of infrastructure and facilities for hosting the 2013 United Nations World Tourism Organization, UNWTO, with initial focus being on the construction of integrated tourism resort, resort uh, comprising of 5 thousand seater convention center as an anchor project. The 271 acre piece of land earmarked for this development, which unfortunately failed to take off, has now been identified as the future growth mode of Victoria Falls Town. To operationalize development on the 271 hectare land, Mosua Tunya has developed a draft concept plan which identifies the projects to be undertaken in the development zones, as well as the infrastructure required to attract investment into the area. Preparations for the comprehensive master plan covering 1,200 hectares in the Masue Estate land area are being spearheaded by the Inter-Ministerial Committee of Officials as well as ZIDA. To give impetus to the Victoria Falls Tourist and Investment Special Economic Zone, Cabinet resolved to expedite processes for the completion of the master plan for the whole Victoria Forbes. Currently, Mosua Tunya Development Company is working with a private sector concern to conduct feasibility studies for the proposed Victoria Falls, Integrated Tourism Park and Masue Estate. This will pave way for development of bulk infrastructure facilities at this site. Projects earmarked for this phase include hotels, shopping malls, and medical facilities, a convention center, and an upmarket golf course. The last item was the gazetting of the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange. Cabinet advises with pleasure that statutory instrument 196 of 2020, which operationalizes the Victoria Falls Stock Exchange, was gazetted on, 20, <clears throat> on Monday, 3rd August 2020. The statutory instrument outlines the exchange control regulations for investment and trading on the BAUS. This sets the process for the actualization of Victoria Falls Financial Hub Special Economic Zone uh, on FM 14. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair.